Okay. Uh, we're going to do a Will Wright's books, <clears throat> formerly known as An Imperishable Wonderland of Infinite Fun, formerly known as Will Wright's book, formerly known as Will Wright's books. We're back to Will Wright's books because I have decided... I'm going to simultaneously write two books, An Imperishable Wonderland of Infinite Fun, which is the curated, mind-blowing part of relational programming. And at the same time, I'm going to write a big brain dump book, which is everything I know about relational programming, poorly explained, just try to get it all down there. And then I'll massage it and edit it and whatever. I just want to try to get down everything that I possibly can, which I know is ultimately impossible, but I'm going to try to do as much as I can um, because I have to go through that stuff anyway in terms of curation. So I may as well get it down. And, and I'm always talking to people about relational programming and I'm you know, going through the same thing over and over again, explaining t to people different things, different parts of the history, different resources, different versions of Mini Canron, might as well just write it down. And I was listening to a Film Courage video today. I put a, I put a link to that one in the last uh, video I made. Um, or maybe it was two videos ago. Anyway, I have a couple of Film Courage YouTube channel. I like Film Courage uh, video channel. One was a long interview with Dr. Ken Atchity, which I really enjoy it. But another one is a sort of a <clears throat> montage of conversations with different writers and, you know, trying to get over fear and things like that. And one person had a great phrase, which was, it was something along the lines of be proud to write poorly. And the main theme was just write, get things down, edit, improve, whatever, but the worst thing you write is still better than the best thing you don't write. And so that's the attitude I'm going to try to take for this big book. So for the imperish an imperishable wonderland of infinite fun, you know, that one I want to have have a certain feel. I want to have it to have a certain degree of polish and, and inspiration and uh, make it really fun, have the really interesting examples that we can do in relational programming be inspiring from that standpoint. But at the same time, I also just want to write down everything that I can in terms of resources and ideas and pointers and projects and all that sort of thing, which is, is closer to a brain dump. Hopefully it's a little more organized than a brain dump. But even if it's just a brain dump, then that would be, I think, a, a useful resource if nothing else, for someone trying to get into relational programming and learning about relational programming or wanting to do research in relational programming, it would give them effectively a source book where they could look through and find references to things that they probably wouldn't know existed. Or maybe my theories about connections between different things that I haven't had a chance to explore. Or something about the history or the evolution of, you know, Kandi and Kandai how that ended up switching over time and, you know, what implementations there are, all those sorts of things um, that people ask me about when I'm talking with them about Minikenren if they're trying to get up to speed. Just go ahead and put that down. Another reason I want to do this, <clears throat> well, first of all, I think having more than one project, you know, now I should say some people have the view that you only work on one thing at a time and, and give that your full effort and attention and then move to something else. I'm not like that in general. Um, in general, I like having more than one thing to work on. But both of these books are, you know, they're on Mini Canron, and I'm already doing the process of, of curation and collecting resources for the Imperishable Wonderland book. So, you know, it's like, it seems, re you know, it seems to make sense to me to to work on both, and they're going to have a different feel. They have a different feel in my head already. And that way, if I get tired of one, which I am getting tired of doing curating without writing, for example, well, then I can switch to the other for a while. Uh, maybe I can write on both uh, someday. So 
I think that's helpful to me, like the sort of the Raymond or the Ray Bradbury approach where you have uh, a bunch of projects you're interested in, you can time switch and sort of, or sort of like a time slice, like, uh, like I'm doing with the videos or was doing when I was recording time videos, I mean, uh, sound videos. And see, I'm having trouble getting the words out of my mouth just because I'm excited about writing. Um, so in any case, so I'm going to have a big brain dump book. And so I'm going to have to probably reorganize some of these files. And for that big brain dump book, I want to focus on just writing without a lot of prep. So the imperishable stuff I'm going through, trying to curate uh, ideas and so forth. So the big brain dump book, I, uh, you know, maybe I'll look at the list of things I've put together, but I, I want to just like start typing and be proud of my poor writing and advertise it in the title of the book. You know, sort of like the most boring videos ever made is going to be the most boring brain dump book ever written. This is fine. If you're interested in mini Canaran brain dumps, then it's probably interesting. And if you're not, well, maybe it's boring, but I never claimed it wasn't boring. I claimed it was boring. It's in the title and I'll just write and I want to write fast. Okay. I want to write fast on it. So just be aware that I'm going to be writing on two books. As far as recording videos with sound, probably for the Imperishable Wonderland book, probably just keep recording those videos silent, even if I was able to record them with sound. You know, for that one, I, I right now I feel like I have to concentrate to, to think about it hard. Whereas with the Big Brain Dump book, you know, I could make video with sound because... The whole point is I'm not trying to write beautifully. I'm just trying to get stuff down. And uh, the only thing I want to make sure of is I don't end up talking about the topics instead of writing about the topics, okay, um, for the big brain dump book. That's the only thing I'm worried about it. All right. So anyway, I just wanted to give background on why I'm doing it and what this book's going to be about. I'm super excited about the big brain dump book because I think I can write pulp style at pulp speed. I swapped out my keyboard, my fancy split keyboard. I'm, I'm back to the desk because I'm using the microphone, the fancy mic. Um, no, not on my bed. I'll go back to my bed and when I'm working on, well, maybe later for this one, if I do a silent one. Uh, but anyway, I switched to my Leopold keyboard, which is just a QWERTY keyboard. It's a nice mechanical keyboard with cherry MX blues. I mean, uh, browns. It's kind of loud. I'll probably bottom out. Sorry, but you know, you might, you might hear me typing, uh, probably not the greatest for my wrists, but you know, I just want to make progress. All right. So that's enough talking. Uh, that was eight minutes of talking. That's eight minutes more than I wanted. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay. I got my coffee. All right, so we have perishable and imperishable. Um, so we have book. I think uh, this. Let's let's have this book under perishable. Okay. I don't know if you can hear how tappy that is. I'm really bad at bottoming out. Okay, so. And let's make a directory. Um, wills. Big, bad, boring, brain dump. On relational. Programming. Now that is a directory name. Okay, let's open that in Emacs. <clears throat> Actually, before we get into Emacs, what do I want to do? So what I want to do is take uh, these book files from imperishable, 
right now. Copy them all over. Okay, let me get rid of the PDF. Yeah, all my meta keys are changed. I figured that would happen if I switched keyboards. All right, whatever, we'll make progress. Okay, make file. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I guess this is the advantage of having barely written anything. It's easy to make changes. Okay, so we'll also make this a CC by. Okay, so we need, need a new title. Will's Big Bad Boring Brain Dump on Relational Programming. Perfect title. Creative Commons license. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh, okay. So we have to, well, I don't know if we have to, but let's include the um, title. Okay, and we have these URLs. I guess I can go with the top level URL for now. <clears throat> okay. Um, got macros, don't have much there. No. I don't need a tech macro file. Okay. March 22nd. see if we can make the book Good status. Oh, okay. Let me add to my writing journal. Writing log. Okay. 
Spring session number one. Created new book. Will's big bad boring brain dump on relational programming. Which I intend to work on at the same time as an imperishable wonderland of infinite fun. Yeah, so I'm not great at typing, but I'm a lot better than I am at split key and QWERTY. Even though I'm not super accurate. Okay. Um, this book, as advertised, is a giant brain dump of everything I know about relational programming and infinite, I mean, <laughs> mini Canron. is intended to be a giant semi-organized at best okay hence the book is located in the perishable subdirectory of this repository. Cool. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> All right. So here's the deal for this one. I'm just going to write and write poorly. Proudly write poorly. Okay. What is this book? Oh. Why this book? The writing philosophy and What is relational programming? What is mini Canron? All right, let's just start writing. This book is intended to be a semi-structured brain dump of what I know 
about relational programming, constraint logic programming. Mini Canron and its variants and related topics. Why this book? I started this book on Friday, March 22nd, 2024, as I, you know, okay, I have started working on another book. in perishable new land of infinite fun which is intended to be a highly curated Highly polished collection of interesting, unusual, and weird relational programs. Intended, you know, to that that I hope will inspire people to explore relational programming. also been talking <clears throat> recently with students and researchers and hobbyists who are interested in learning about any Canron and relational programming at the implementation applications <clears throat> theory and fun Perspectives since I'm curating many Canron resources already. So for the For, for an imperishable wonderland of infinite fun and talking regularly and yeah, regularly people interested in Mini Kenron. Seem 
seems like the perfect time to make a big, bad, boring brain dump book. Writing philosophy behind this book. Get it done. What was that phrase I said? It was something like write poorly proudly. proudly get all the ideas in my head down paper as quickly as possible First finished book is better than the best unfinished book. And I think that was also, something like that was also in a Film Courage video. Dean Wesley Smith's notion of working at, quote, pulp speed is also influential. This also, whoops, also inspires me to write a book into the dark or whatever whatever he says I think it's not like writing into the dark yeah so I got a thing I got a few things to look up Start typing. Okay, so that's the sort of this this is the sort of book. You can just sit down and start typing. All right. Uh, who is the audience? For this book. People who are trying to learn about Mini Canron and or relational programming 
and or constraint logic programming etc at a deeper level than can be found in reason schemer or the micro canron um, paper nothing else I hope you will find this book interesting and inspiring in terms of the connections between different styles different techniques Um, approach uh, languages other than mini canon this is, sentence isn't making a lot of sense uh, I hope you will find this book interesting alright my standards for this book are low but they're not so low that that sentence which isn't going anywhere is going to stay. I'm going to have to fix that one. If nothing else, I hope you will find your own connections and inspiration in the semi-random collection And this semi random collection of relational programming lore. <clears throat> you are almost guaranteed. You stumble across some things, some ideas or techniques or artifacts or perspectives or challenge, uh, yeah that you haven't seen before even if you have been programming for a, long, for a very long time Okay. <clears throat> Great. All right, what is relational programming? Relational programming is a paradigm, it's a programming paradigm uh, 
in which computation How does this? So much computation is represented. You know, it's the apparent. It's the uh, simple sounding things like what's relational programming. Those are the things that are really hard. Which computations are? Modeled is mathematical or logical relations. This is in contrast, for example to functional programming in which computations are modeled as mathematical functions mapping inputs to outputs In relational programming, we erase the distinction, or we do not recognize. We relational programming does away with relational programming does not distinguish. does not include the notion or dispenses with the notion. Unlike most approaches to programming, dispenses with the notion of inputs and outputs. Instead, relations Except each relation instead a relation takes zero or more terms and each term can contain zero or more logic variables. Also known as unification variables. That can represent unknown values.
relational programming allows relational programs constrain these terms and values, or these terms and logic variables, these terms, including, including their logic variables, constraints such such as syntactic equality and syntactic disequality logic or constraint engine, a constraint logic reasoning engine performs a mixture of constraint solving and search potentially say potentially very sophisticated performs a potentially very sophisticated mixture of constraint solving and search in an attempt to to find find assignments to the logic variables that satisfy all the constraints. Often these If the relational program supports, you know, includes you know, uh, recursion, there may be multiple solutions to one of these constraint problems. Mm. 
including infinitely many solutions. Alternatively, the constraint logic engine might <coughs> search <coughs> an infinite search space looking for an answer, a solution and for a solution A constraint problem looking for a non existent solution to a constraint problem. In this case, the logic engine, the constraint logic engine. may end up diverging, looping forever, or may be able to prove in finite time that no solution exists. finite failure. <clears throat> cool. What is Mini Canron? Mini Canron is a family of constraint logic programming languages along with each of which has one or more constraint logic reasoning engines each of which is implemented by one or more constraint logic reasoning engines. Many Canron, many implementations of Mini Canron focus on logical purity emphasizing the relational 
aspects of computation. Some implementations of mini Canron like languages such as core dot logic some variants about that such as core logic and closure focus more on pragmatic uses of the language as part of pragmatic as part of the program logic in a standard application. Other variants such as Ocanrin and Closure, there's a Ocamel. Explore the relational aspects from a research perspective. Most implementations of Mini Canron are embedded domain specific languages most most mini canrons are implemented as embedded domain specific languages meaning that they extend some host language with additional functions with additional <coughs> you know with additional functions, methods, etc. supporting the many Canon language and along with an implementation in the host language logic reasoning engine historically you 
Mini Canron has been implemented. Variants of Lisp. Scheme. Bracket. Closure. Or other functional languages. Camel and Haskell. There has been some work on implementing Canron as a standalone language and runtime. Also been some work. On. Okay. Well, so much for my 30 minute rule, right? We're 57 minutes, 30 seconds in. Now I did gab for eight and a half minutes at the beginning or whatever, and I wasn't writing the entire time, but hmm. um, you know, talk about pulp speed. If I uh, put in a few sessions of this each day, I think I could write quite a bit. Yeah, kind of not very good in a way, but um, you know, I can imagine just trying to get down everything. And if I have three ways of looking at something, I could just write down all three, three ways quickly uh, in a not perfect way, not perfect style, but still could be helpful. So I, I like this. I think it's fun. I think it's fun to do the brain dump. You know, we'll see if in two weeks or two months, I think it's still fun to do the brain dump, but I like it. I like moving fast. I like being able to move fast. I'm impatient to start writing. Um, and so if I'm going to curate ideas, may as well start doing the brain dump. So anyway, um, you know, I, I'm still planning to do silent writing videos. Uh, I think that's just a necessity because I'm going to write early in the morning and late at night and things like that. So and there'll be lots of silent writing videos, I hope. And I will, you know, I intend, you know, who knows about predicting the future, but I intend to keep writing on this brain dump book um, at a furious pace, I hope. And also to make progress on the imperishable wonderland of infinite fun. And I think they'll tie into each other. I think there'll be a virtuous uh, feedback where I'll think really hard about the imperishable wonderland. It's like, what's the really fun part of relational programming? What are the really cool examples? And, you know, try to get the, the jewel-like gem, you know, kind of like the scheme, you know, and like, what's the essence? What's the really cool part? And at the same time, Okay, well, here's everything, and, you know, it's kind of messy, super messy, actually. But if you rummage through it, you might find something cool that you didn't know about, and, you know, to you it might be a treasure. So i um, going to do both. All right, well, that's it for now. Um, that's, wow, that's exactly an hour. An hour. Okay, I, I could do these hour-long sessions easily every day, I'm sure, because I've just got so much to write. As long as I don't self-censor myself, which I think in this format, uh, I wouldn't. That's like the whole point of writing really fast. So anyway, I, I like this. This is fun. This is really fun. This is the most fun I've had writing in a very, very long time. So I'm just going to keep doing this. 
And also I'll work on the imperishable stuff and uh, make progress. Hope you all are doing well. Talk to you soon.